Now there's been some debate for a while in the gas industry on whether boiler flues need to be sealed on the outside and the inside of the property or not. Well, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and let's get on with it and find out exactly if flues do need to be sealed on the outside and the inside or there's other things we can do. Now, normally we would be looking at the manufacturer's instructions for the installation of a flu system or consulting BS 5440 part 1 2008 for all the information we require when we're doing these flus. But way back on the 2nd of January 2018, GasSafe introduced technical bulletin 152 which is basically telling us about securing and sealing horizontal flues when they terminate in through an outside wall. So let's take a closer look at this bulletin then. So the bulletin goes on to say, securing and sealing of chimneys. When fitting a chimney, there are two distinct and separate requirements for the installer to consider. Weatherproofing of the termination to prevent weather and or combustion products entering, or the security of the chimney to prevent disconnection. Now then, the reason why they brought this out is because a lot of the boiler manufacturers flues, unless you actually use sand and cement to seal the inside and the outside, are not very secure laterally. So basically from the outside of the building, you could just pull the flue out. So GasSafe have produced this technical bulletin now to help engineers to see whether they need to seal the outside and the inside to prevent the flu from coming apart. Now, technical bulletin 152 goes on about the weather collar here. And it says, weatherproofing of termination to prevent weather and or combustion products entering. A correctly installed weather collar will prevent ingress of weather and combustion products. In isolation, this may not ensure the chimney is secure. So what they're saying is, like we've just shown, if this collar is just installed on the outside, you may still be able to pull the flue through. If that is the case, then you should be using sand and cement on the inside of the property to secure the flue to stop it being laterally pulled out. The technical bulletin 152 then goes on to say, Security of chimney to prevent disconnection. Some chimneys require screws in the joints to ensure that they remain intact. However, others are push fit. If there is doubt, the manufacturers of the appliance shall be consulted to confirm whether or not screws are required. In such instances, the ability of the chimney to retain its integrity should be considered, e.g. push fit with only a rubber weather collar, or seal could become disconnected or could be disconnected by a person either internally or externally from the property. The use of sand and cement to seal the chimney to the fabric of the building would satisfy both one and two. So if we take this valent flue, you can see they have a collar on the flue itself and a collar which secures onto the turret. So you can see there are holes here where it screws into the elbow and the turret and these two screws will secure the elbow to the flue system via this collar. So there is no way this can be pulled out of the appliance from the outside laterally or from the inside. So technically with this old valent flue system in this configuration, this weather seal being on the outside wall and this manufacturer's collar being on the inside with the screws securing it to the flue turret that would be deemed appropriate because this would stop rain and products of combustion coming in and there are holes in here to secure that to the wall as well so if you'd called the hole out made a nice neat hole and secured that flue that way then that would be deemed satisfactory me personally still seals inside and outside but technically on this old system this old valent I've changed their flue system but on this old valent flue system it would be deemed satisfactory but there are some manufacturers who kind of use the same flue system as this one but don't require the screws 
So let's have a look at that then. Now, here we have an Ariston boiler, which uses pretty much the same flue system as the Valent. But here, we don't use screws because what Ariston say is, it's a viewport, the hole, to see whether the flue has gone full socket. But, the flue system comes off incredibly easy because the hole isn't sealed. So, this flue system would need sealing with sand and cement on the inside because there is a weather seal on the outside which is deemed good enough. But if it didn't have the weather seal on the outside, that would also need to be sealed with sand and cement. Now, one of the boiler manufacturers who've actually got a flue system which complies with everything already is Worcester. Now, one of the things you'll find with Worcesters is if you've got one of the boilers with the round heat exchanger, there will be a service inspection hatch here on the right hand side of the boiler. Now, if your flue goes out from the right hand side, so you'll be blocking access to be able to remove the baffles from out of the heat exchanger if your flue is going across it. So Worcester have thought about that. So their flue system is completely screwed together. Now it comes as a telescopic flue as well, so you've got to make sure you put your screws in the flue system and put your tape around so it still doesn't pull out. So on the outside we have this weather collar which will stop weather and products of combustion getting back in. And we've also got this nice collar on the inside of the wall to seal on the inside. So, as long as you have called the hole out, you will be able to use this Worcester flue without having to brick up or seal inside or outside because it's already done by the manufacturer as long as you install it correctly. And as long as you've called the hole out, if you smash it out with a hammer and make a big mess, it, it ain't gonna be sealed then, is it? So they've thought about it. Also, a lot of the old Worcesters had the expansion vessel on the back of the boiler and you would need to take the actual boiler off the wall to be able to get at the expansion vessel. So if this flue was coming straight out of the back of the boiler as well and installed correctly, you'd be able to remove the flue, take the boiler off the wall and get at the expansion vessel without any hassle. So that's uh, one of the boiler manufacturers who thought about having to take the flue out and also complying with all the regulations. Now Worcester, to help engineers and assist them, have produced a technical bulletin on the installation of their horizontal flue systems which you can get off the interweb. Dead easy to get, because I got it. So this will also help you how to install the Worcester flues. But is there any other different types of materials we can use to seal the flues inside and out without using sand and cement? Well, if we take this flue system, you can see it's covered with expanding foam. So can we use expanding foam? Well, technically, some of the manufacturers do say we can use expanding foam as long as it doesn't crush the flue system and it's flame retardant or heat resistant. We could also use silicone as well. But again, the silicone needs to be heat resistant. Let's have a quick look and see what Technical Bulletin 152 says about expanding foam and heat resistant silicone. Sealing the annular space around a chimney with sealants other than sand and cement. If during installation gas safe registered engineers are unable to confirm the suitability of a sealant, e.g. an expanding foam product or silicone, from both the boiler and sealant manufacturers, then the sealant product should not be used. Due to shrinkage and potential UV degradation etc. Where a gas safe registered business encounters an installation where the chimney has been sealed to the structure using a sealant it should be inspected to ensure integrity of the sealant is maintained. So my advice would be if you are using a expanding foam and a sealant use it very very sparsely so you're not going to crush the flue if you're using expanding foam but also just go over it 
with sand and cement. Because if the sand and cement does crack, then you've still got the protection behind it. So, is there another thing we can use besides sealant, sand and cement and expanding foam? Well, yes, there is. There's a product out there called Flu Snug, which was brought out by the same company who makes the pipe snug. So what Flu Snug is, is basically a seal, which will seal the building from wind and products of combustion and rain. And it also complies with the new regulations for part L. Now, how do we install this pipe snug then? Well, basically, the first thing we need to do is core out a hole of 152 millimetres. Once we've cored the hole out, then basically you can just slide the flu snug into your hole and it will create its own seal. No need for using sand and cement or silicone. And you can buy the flu snug in black or white in colour and it can go inside or outside. Next thing you need to do then is you can slide your flue from outside to in or inside to out through the flue snug because it's very flexible and it will make a perfect weather and products of combustion seal to stop those getting into the property. But there could be a problem. You still might be able to pull the flue through the flue snug if it's not secured onto the boiler. So in that situation you would have to follow the boiler manufacturer's instructions to see whether you can install the flu snug or not. Now again Worcester in their technical bulletin tells you exactly how to install the flu snug and they basically say if the flu snug is used in this situation and the flu extension is installed between the boiler flu adapter and the vinyl flu elbow, the flu extension must be securely bracketed within 150mm of the elbow and the elbow to the terminal joint must be secured with screws. And the terminal section must be either be sealed to the building using a suitable building material or a flu snug must be used on both the internal and external faces. So that is another product you can use to seal your flu without the need of sand and cement or foam or silicone. And that's the end of this video. I hope it's been some use for you. And if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to the channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Sundays at the moment. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.